so good. During our sabbatical, Lisa and I just had this profound time of just recognizing that this was a season for us to contend for Jubilee, that we needed to do things in our lives, that we needed to put something of the spotlight again on this understanding that the Lord wants us to come into a place of financial freedom, get out from under the the bondage and the heaviness of, of, of debt, you know, our, our bond and that sort of thing. And so we're leaning into it. And because we're leaning into it, well, guess what? You guys have to as well. Because <laughs> we're in this together. Yeah, yeah. And so we're trusting the Lord that our breakthrough is going to be everybody's breakthrough. All right? But we're, we're leaning into it. So we, we need to be consciously stirring up our faith and our actions as we trust the Lord that he's going to make things you know, shift around into uh, a different set of circumstances. Yeah? yeah? He can do it. He's done it many times, and he can do it again. Yeah. And so we have this expectation that we're actually going to be stepping into this thing and that the breakthrough is just around the corner. On, yeah. Amen. Thank you. All right. So talking about breakthroughs, we've been on this subject for for a few weeks now. In fact, this is number four, and I'm hoping that we're able to sort of wrap it up together here. So we started out in in recognizing that this year is the year of the open door. Yeah? And so the Lord has got a door open for us for things in the heavenly realms that he wants to release to us. And the, the door he is opening, and we need to access things for our lives that we're able to fulfill his plans and purposes. So he's called us to certain things, but he's giving to us what we need. But it comes from that realm into this realm, right? And so we noted, and I see my sisters here, that we, her pantry... All right, her pantry is fully stocked, but unless we go through and we access what's in the pantry, we can be in the lounge and we're no better off. We actually need to be accessing what the Lord has for us. And this is the year of an open door. Now, the things that the Lord has for us, what he's highlighting is not so much about more things. Yeah. Because typically we gravitate to the, the natural things, the things that we, you know, we need. And, you know, another car, that's useful. For how long? Yeah. You get a new car? It's good for what? Seven years? Ten years? Whatever it is. Maybe a bit longer. Some of us, we know how to extend the lifespan of a vehicle. But it's a temporary thing compared to all of eternity. So surely the Lord wants to give us things that are of much more value than just temporary things. He hasn't got an issue with us having temporary things, but that's not the main point of living. The main point is eternity. So he's more interested in, in that realm to this realm, giving us eternal things, things of eternal value. The true riches of the kingdom. So it's spiritual things that he's wanting to give to us. Yes, of course, as well as natural things. And so our focus is, all right, Lord, there's revelation. There's understanding. There is anointing. There is gifting. There are things in the spirit realm that you have for us that you're wanting to unfold and to release to us. And there's a this invitation, the open door to go and access what he has for us, all right? But I don't want you to come in November and say, you know what, John? This was meant to be the year of the open door, but I got nothing, all right? And I I, I just, I mean, I couldn't even find the door. (laughs) I mean, you keep talking of this door, but like, mm -mm, not, not on my radar, Okay, now remember that the enemy doesn't want you to receive what God has for you. So he's going to do certain things 
that are going to actually come against your accessing what the Lord has for you. Mm -hmm. And so the enemy is stirring up. We know that this is an amazing season that we're in right now. So the Lord is releasing healing and freedom. There's salvations. There's just amazing things. There's revelation. We're seeing things in the word that we've kind of like, oh my goodness, that was a treasure that was hidden there. And now the Lord has you know, revealed it. So there's beautiful things that are happening and there's a momentum, there's an increase. I mean, just look around the room, you can see that there's an increase. So we can see, we can observe that the Lord is moving and the kingdom is advancing and there are a bunch of things that are taking place that confirms to us God's on the move. But the enemy doesn't always like that, right? And so there are some times when we bump into obstacles, all right, or there are barriers that get in the way of what the Lord has for us. In other words, there are times that we need to push through something to get to the open door. Are you tracking with me? So, okay, open door, well, there could be an obstacle that we need to overcome, and the great thing about overcoming is that when we get over this thing, not only are we over it, but also there's a reward for overcoming. I mean, it's bonus, it's a win-win, right? So that's amazing. So we get to overcome and we grow in our faith and we get strengthened as well as there are eternal rewards for those who overcome. So there's times when we need to overcome, but there are other times when the Lord wants that wall to come down or to smash open a breach in the wall so we can get through. So we talk about a breakthrough, right? And so Perizim is the Lord breaks through like mighty waters, breaking an outbreak of waters, like a flood that, that bursts the damn wall, right? And the beautiful thing about a burst like that is that there's now this opening for more to come through. So when we get a breakthrough, not only do we go through, but other people following us can also go through. Yay. All right. Because if it's just an overcome, well, the obstacle's still there, possibly. Somebody else is going like, oh, can't get through. But if we cause a breakthrough, then the other people can come through with us. Yeah. So the Lord is, is, is giving us the ability to recognize what he's doing and to recognize what the enemy is doing. So um, Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says, you know, boys and girls, we are not unaware of the enemy's schemes. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Because I think they were unaware of the enemy's schemes. So the enemy has got things that he tries to put in, in our way and block our path, tries to intimidate us and tries to get us to back down. Yeah, this last weekend, uh, I went to go and join a number of people praying at Constitutional Hill. And um, we were praying for the nation and praying into the elections, which is really good. One of the items that they put onto the, the, the program for prayer, it wasn't the main thing, it was one of the things. But this one thing attracted an enormous amount of opposition. And this one thing was to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so the people who don't like the peace of Jerusalem, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, they decided that they're going to try and hijack the whole thing. So what they did was they took the logo and they tweaked it just slightly. And they took the prayer points and they made them 180 degrees the other way. So instead of praying for, they were praying against. And, you know, from the river to the sea and all that stuff. And so <clears throat> they also changed the time from four o'clock to two o'clock because they wanted to try and get there and dominate the places. Okay? But, you know, we got wind of this thing and so we had this understanding that we will just check out where it's going and we'll have an alternative place to pray because our, our objective is to pray, not to have a confrontation. Okay? And so uh, when people were arriving there, they said, you know, people with all kinds of dishcloths around their necks, um, were saying, where's the prayer meeting? And they said, well, it's meant to be over there. They weren't lying. It's just that 
the believers were going to go somewhere else. But they said, it's meant to be over there. So they all went hanging out there, and the Christians went to a different place to go and pray. And there was this thing at, at Constitutional Hill where there were a bunch of people who were getting together to celebrate the rainbow. And the people who also want the river, I mean, from the river to the sea to be free don't like people from the rainbow, which is quite funny. But anyway, so they went there and they broke, they broke into what was a, a pride event. And they protested and they're kind of like, oops, we're breaking up the wrong It's like awkward. <laughs> We've just disrupted the wrong thing. Um, anyway, but then they came and they marched all the way down to, to where we were and we'd been praying for an, for an hour and we were actually literally just wrapping up. And then they came and they surrounded the prayers and they were swearing and cursing and uh, I'm not going to say spitting, but saliva was flying. <laughs> I know this because I had to wipe my face. Okay. And, you know, a guy shouting this far away from my ears and accusing everybody there of doing all sorts of very, very horrible things. And now the point was that they were coming in the natural but we were observing this as a spiritual battle. And so they were, you know, in the back trying to pick a fight. You know, this is the enemy tactics. Um, but we just like, you know, hold your peace. It's okay. This is not what that's about. And um, the thing, what was so palpable was a spirit of hatred. It was like vengeance and hatred and whatever. It's like, oh, okay. So... Our wrestle is not flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Okay, so we were there. The main objective is praying for the nation. Included in one of the aspects was praying for a piece of ground in the Middle East. Now, I think I've said this before, and I'm just going to hopefully, you know, just a, a few moments on this thing. But please, let us remember that there's a big difference between the name of a geographical location that has got a political system and a government that's in place and a group of people that the Lord used in the scriptures and he released his prophetic word and promises to, all right? But there is a difference between the old covenant and the new covenant and we come to him on the basis of the new covenant. Everybody on the planet comes to him on the basis of the new covenant. So just because there's a local country and a government in place because they've got the same name doesn't mean they get a free pass. And too many Christians are misunderstanding because it's got the same name that they think, oh, these people get all the blessings. No, 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 they will only get the blessings if they are people of faith, not because they live in a particular geographic region, all right? And so please, let us just be aware of what's going on. They're tides and spiritual battles, and a number of Christians are just totally confused because they didn't think through the difference between people of faith and people who live in an area. Are we okay with this? All right, otherwise, you're going to be really confused about like 100 people, over 100 people die this last week in an aid distribution thing. And when they go and check, they say like, oh, my goodness, we've got a lot of gunshot wounds here. You know, from our own painful past in this country, we've, we've, we know the chaos involved in these things. And there's no ways we can say, it's okay, they're God's people. No, we cannot. Oh, oh, do you understand? You're thinking this through, right? Yeah. And so, please, as, as, as believers, don't just keep passing on, you know, forwarding whatever you get in WhatsApp or whatever, and all the YouTube preachers and stuff, and, and particularly this, this angst about Jesus coming back next week. 
Okay? Please, please. You know, there's, there's just so much. There's just so much that Jesus wants to do. That the, and, and there's just so much in terms of the body of Christ that needs to grow up into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Yeah, we've, got, we've actually got a lot. We, man, the bride is not ready yet. She's not without blemish or spot or wrinkle, okay? And, and so he's getting the bride ready for the coming of the groom. And, uh, and, and so don't be distracted. Otherwise, you're just kind of like, well, that's it. He's coming next week, so I don't have to pay my debts. You know, I don't have to, I don't have to do this because I'm not going to be here. He, he's coming next week. And so you clock out of living now for him. And you clock out from stewarding everything that is given you to steward. Are you, are you, yeah? So we, we, let's, just, let's just hold our ground and let's just study the end times a little bit better. And, and let's just recognize that Jesus, when he was talking about, and there will be wars and rumors of wars, he was talking about the destruction of the temple in AD 70. That's the question that the disciples asked him. Because Jesus said there will not be one stone left on top of another. What was that? It was the temple. When did that get destroyed? AD 70. Before he's answer, while he's answering that specific question, he says there'll be wars and rumors of wars. He wasn't talking about now. Okay, so let's just make sure that we are reading and understanding what's going on in the quote-unquote end times because we know on the day of Pentecost, Peter stands up and he quotes from Joel and he says, these are the last days. So the last days began 2,000 years ago. All right, so there's been a lot of confusion that's been happening in the body of Christ for a very long time. Let's say, Holy Spirit, would you help us not to get caught up in the fear and the panic about all of these things. You know, which is the horseman that has been released now? You, you, you know, who's the... Did you know? The Antichrist has been revealed. Really? Who's it this time? Because we've got to keep upgrading and updating like every few months. You know, every political cycle... You know, we've got, to, we've got to, so oops, edit, backspace, delete, new name. Okay, let's not get into those things because they distract us from living righteous lives that are fruitful for the king and his kingdom, which is advancing. Okay, so we were praying for the nation, and there came a spiritual opposition. People were involved, but it was a spiritual opposition, okay? Please, let's always recognize when somebody is coming against us, there's a spirit behind it. It's not the person. The person is not my enemy. The spirit behind it is the thing that I need to stand. And having done everything, I'm still standing. All right? Okay. So, pantry. Are oh, you back at the pantry? Okay. God has got things for us. There's an open door, but the enemy will put blockages in the way to try and prevent us from accessing what God has for us. Why? Because he knows that if we step into the fullness of what God has for us, we more dangerous for him. So he tries to discourage us or block us from gaining access to what God has for us. Okay? So, we know we're going to be overcomers, but we're in a fight. Admittedly, it's not a fair fight. Poor guy. He's already lost. Okay? So we know that he... Jesus has made us to be more than conquerors. So the enemy's time is short and he's going to be defeated. Okay? So, as we face these things, perhaps you can turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 11. Hebrews 6 and verse 11. And for us to recognize that we are 
in this process of trusting the Lord for breakthroughs. But sometimes the breakthrough takes more than a couple of weeks. Right? And if we don't recognize this, we may throw in the towel when we're not supposed to. In fact, we're never really supposed to throw in the towel. Okay? So Hebrews 6 says, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Isn't that awesome? You're hoping for something. You're hoping for victory, for freedom. You're hoping for provision. You're hoping for more. This needs to be fully realized, okay? So you know what? Show diligence. In other words, stick at it, right? Not only that, in verse 12, we do not want you to become lazy, oopsie, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Through faith and patience. So that thing of patience, patience could also be endurance. So there's a, there's a thing of we trusting the Lord, that's what faith is, is we're leaning on him, we're relying on him. That's the whole thing of faith. I'm not trusting in myself, I'm trusting in him. I'm putting my belief, my trust in him. That's faith. All right? I, I like to take words that we sometimes complicate, and can we just like bring it right down into, like, how does this apply to my life today? Because otherwise I'm, you know, got to do all kinds of hectic seminars and whatever. It's like, what is true faith? And have you got biblical faith? How much faith have you got? What size seed have you got? And it's like, oh, it's really complicated. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Faith is relying, leaning on, depending on. Hoping in, okay, this is like, okay, I'm going to, my future is secure because I'm trusting in him, not in my abilities. So that faith is I keep on trusting and relying on him. I'm not helping him out. It's him, okay? While I'm completely and absolutely relying on him, I'm also working. Have I just contradicted myself? No. I'm doing everything in his strength, not in mine. But as he's giving me things, I'm then putting it to work. So I'm not just like lazy sitting on my blessed assurance. It's like, God, you do it all and I do nothing. There's partnership here. He's, he said to his, his people, he said, let's go and let's have a wonderful worship time in the, in the promised land. Land flowing with milk and honey. We're gonna have a glorious time. He says, you know what? I love you so much, I'm giving you the ground. He says, cool. He says, now get up and go and fight. See, it's both. But he says, don't worry, I'm going ahead of you. I'm going to drive them out like sending like hornets. These oaks won't know what's going on. But you're going to have to fight because you must go and lay hold of it. So in Hebrews here, it says, through faith and patience, inherit what has been promised. So there's a contending for, there's a laboring, there's a working with God for the very thing that we're trusting him to give. But it's patience. There's a patient endurance. All right? You only need endurance when it's like the long haul. Okay? So if we're trusting the Lord for a breakthrough, this, the, these things, these promises that are ours, you know, we're going to push and we're going to push. Like, and I prayed for three minutes, you know. It's like, man, I gave it my all for three minutes. You know, and, and still the answer's not here. Well, go for another three minutes. Go for another three hours. Go for another three days. Go for another three weeks. Go for another three months. Go for another three years. Go for another three decades. Are you tracking? Because just because, you know, I prayed, you know, like it didn't happen, so pff, God doesn't want to do it. Listen, the enemy, if he knows it's that easy to discourage you, 
He's just going to put little polystyrene walls up there. Because you just turn back at the first sight of a polystyrene wall. Because you don't know that you've got the power to smash through that thing. So he doesn't even bother putting up walls of, of stone or brick or whatever it is. Because it's like, you know what, Dad? Just the first sight of polystyrene and they wither. No, 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 come on. So we're going to push through and we're going to push and we're going to push. Their prophetic words that we've received, I know I've got words that haven't yet come through. And I've been hanging on to them for years, even decades. I, I've, I've watched others that took decades to, to come about. One very specific one was 32 years. All right? And it's like, okay, it's going to happen. But it didn't happen in three weeks. 32 years. And, they, and, and there are other words that God has. That's why I know he's not coming next week. Because the words haven't materialized yet. So I know that there's still some work for us to do. There are things for us as the breakthrough family to do corporately, and there are things in our lives individually that God has for us. We haven't yet seen the answer to these things. Okay, well, we're here for the long haul. And we're going to contend for these things, and it's through faith and patience. There's a bit of endurance that's involved here. So we keep pushing until we get through. So breakthrough sometimes can happen like that. Oh, that's amazing. And we love those testimonies. But, you know, sometimes work in the gym, working against resistance causes the growth. It's not like, you know, I did a quick pump up booster, bit of steroids, you know, instant. I mean, we like that and look good for the pictures. But the reality is there's not the strength underlying it. And it's the length of time actually going again and again, pushing against the resistance that actually builds and strengthens. And our faith gets built and strengthened when there are things that we've got to push through and push through and push through and push through. Yeah? yeah? It's not like God is, is, is trying to mess with you. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just teasing, hey? You know, like a carrot chasing, or a, uh, a donkey chasing after a carrot. It's like it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps, never gets there. That's not God. Okay? The, he, he's leading us He's telling us, listen, at the end of the storm, I'll see you on the other side. Amen. He gives us the word like he gave to the 12, and he says, boys, get in the boat, I'll catch you on the other side. Yeah. He gave them a word on the other side of the storm, I'm going to meet you there. They didn't even know there was a storm coming when they got the word. <laughs> they thought they're going sunset cruise. <laughs> it's like, oh, I like, they haven't been on the water for a while. It's like, this is so nice, the fishermen were saying <laughs> to themselves until the storm came. But there was a word, I'll meet you on the other side. So the Lord has given us prophetic words to draw us and we know that he's gonna meet us on that side. But we're pushing through things and what happens is that we grow stronger, we develop a maturity in the realm of the spirit so that we actually are able to carry the weight of what he's entrusting to us. Mm-hmm. Okay, so would you turn to Isaiah chapter 45 and let's see if we can look at a couple of passages here in Isaiah that I, I think are going to speak to this thing of breakthrough and what the Lord is doing in the season. Isaiah 45 verses 1, 2, and 3. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I will take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and I will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. And I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places. 
so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. This is pretty powerful, yes? Okay. Who's Cyrus? Cyrus is an ungodly, unbelieving king from another nation. This is the round about the era where the, the people had been in Babylon captivity for 70 years. So the people of Israel, they sinned. God called them back through the prophets. They didn't listen. Eventually he said, listen, you're not listening to me. I need to get your attention in a very particular way. And while we do that, by the way, the land, which is meant to have had rest, because I'm really interested in this thing of rest, we're going to give the land a break for 70 years. So the, over the, 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 um, all the times when you should have let it lie fallow and you didn't, well, we're going to do it all back to back. It's going to take 70 years. So let's all go on holiday for 70 years in Babylon and give the land a holiday. All right? And so he raised up the Babylonians to come and to take the people of God off into captivity because they didn't necessarily want to go to captivity on their own. <laughs> so they had to be helped. They had to be escorted into captivity by the Babylonians. And so they're whinging and moaning and groaning and all the rest of it. And God is actually working very powerfully in all that thing. But the Babylonians didn't do it in a gracious way. They were heavy handed. And God said, I raised you up for a purpose, but because of the way you did it, you actually hurt my people. So now I'm going to hurt you. Okay? And so, I mean, this is the whole thing of Habakkuk. It's kind of like, Lord, how can you raise up these people? When I mean, these Babylonians, they were ruthless people and all the rest of it. And God says, Chill, I'm going to sort them out. So he says, Okay, well, I will wait for the day of calamity to come. Okay? So. This is all long prophesied before it happens. God says, listen, I'm going to raise up another bunch who are going to give them a snort club because of the way they gave my people a... Okay? So he raises up the Medes and the Persians. And so Cyrus is prophesied that he will be raised up as an instrument not only to sort out the Babylonians, but also to return the people of God back after the holiday was over. And to give them pocket money on their way back. This is an extraordinary, yeah? So this is Cyrus. Okay. Now in this whole thing, he says that d doors are going to be open. You know, gates not going to be shut. I will go before and I will level the mountains. This is verse 2. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. Now, God's not saying, listen, Cyrus is going to literally change the geographic landscape of the region. You know, some people look at the scripture where it says, you know, say to this mountain, be cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, it will be done. Yeah? So listen, the people in Cape Town do not want you to go and practice on their mountain. I mean, there's sea, there's mountain, it's like obvious, like, whoa, wouldn't it be amazing? It's like, no, it wouldn't be amazing because God's not actually saying, listen, let's deal with Kilimanjaro or Everest or Table Mountain, any of that. That's not what he's saying. The, the mountain here, it's, it's a reference to an, something that stands in the way of God's purposes. So that mountain, that obstacle will be brought low, will be leveled. Yeah? Okay. So this is about the obstacles that stand in the way of the open doors. Are you tracking this? Not only that, but he says, listen, there are um, gates of uh, bronze and bars of iron. He says, I'm actually going to break these things and cut through them. To me, that sounds like the Lord is bringing breakthrough of those things that have been standing in the way, like, like prison bars. And some of us have been kept in a narrow place, like we've been imprisoned, 
Maybe it's a health thing. Maybe it's a relationship thing. Maybe it's a finance thing. Maybe it's shame. Maybe it's a wounded thing. Maybe there's something in our past and has kept us trapped. And the Lord is coming to cut the bars. He's coming to break the chains. So we were singing this morning. Now these songs were, were, were you know, we, we worked through them like a couple of weeks ago and didn't know that I was going, in fact, I was supposed to preach this last week. But because you interrupted me so much, I had to do it this week. So, no, I'm just kidding. So the thing is that it's the Lord who's bringing these things together. We make our plans, but he overrides the plans so we can see his hand in this. So we're singing that he breaks the chains. It's like, this is it. He's basically prophesying to us and he's saying, listen, the things that have held you captive, I'm going to sort those things. I'm going to bring freedom, breakthrough. All right, there have been, they've been these, these barriers, these obstacles. And by the power of my spirit, I'm going to set you free. I'm going to break these things. Now, I might even raise up Osiris. Isn't that awesome? I mean, God can use a donkey. Yeah, he can use a Cyrus. He can use Balaam, a false prophet. God can use ravens, an unclean bird, to be Uber Eats. Yeah? He sends, he sends the, the prophet um, Elisha. He sends the prophet beyond the borders of what's meant to be God's land. And he sends them into enemy territory, supposedly godless place, and performs the miracles there. Yeah. So God, he, I was going to say he's out the box. Well, he is out the box. I mean, the whole thing of the Ark of the Covenant, the box, he's not in the box anymore. He's... He used the out the box long before people said, oh, you must think out the box. God does things that are unusual. And God can cause freedom and breakthrough to come into your life in some very unusual ways. Let's not limit God and say you can only bring the breakthrough like this. So he's, he's way bigger than, than our ideas. How about we look at Isaiah 42, verse 6 and 7. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. To open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Okay? So, yes, we know that this is prophetically speaking about Jesus because we know also from Isaiah 9, um, behold those sitting in darkness have seen a great light. To us a son is given, a child is born. All right, so we know that this is speaking prophetically of Jesus. And so he comes to be a light to the Gentiles. Gentiles are speaking of those who do not yet follow God. Yeah. Yay. So he's saying, listen, I'm coming and I'm bringing light where there's darkness. Those who've been imprisoned and in a dungeon, whether it be mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, whatever the dungeon is, I'm coming to get, spring you out of that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm coming, whatever the trap of the enemy. All right, remember Paul writing to the Corinthians. Of the schemes and the devices of the enemy. He's come to set us free from the snare of the fowler. All right. In other words, whatever the trap is that the enemy's put there or barrier, whatever it is, he's come, sort it out, smash it so we can go free. Yay. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. So he's coming to bring freedom to us that we can freely have access into the open door that he has for us. So there's the breakthroughs that we're contending for have got a special significance in this year. 
because it's, it's like it's going to be a double win. Not only do we get the breakthrough and we're no longer in the enemy's trap, but now we can go through the open door. Yay. All right. How about we go to Isaiah 61 as uh, we, we bring our, our time together to a close over the next two hours. I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. So Isaiah 61, this for us is a key, crucial scripture. The, the first seven verses of Isaiah 61. The Lord has embedded this into us as the family. I'm just going to look at the first three verses here. But this is super, super important for us just to be reminded of. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Is this amazing? You're going to be oaks of righteousness. Yeah, that's how we know God is South African. This is, you oaks, you oaks are going to be oaks of righteousness. So we kind of, yeah. So, but in all of this, okay, so Isaiah prophesies about the one to come, the Messiah. When Jesus stands up, and you'll see this in Luke chapter 4, and he's announcing, in a sense, his public ministry. And he reads, it's amazing how the Lord interrupted everything and there they open the scroll and it just happens, it just happens to be at this passage. And he reads it, this is Isaiah 61, rolls up the scroll and he sits down because that's how they used to preach in those days. Long sermons, that's why they'd sit down. And everyone's looking at him and he says, today... This is being fulfilled in your, in your midst, in your hearing. In other words, Jesus is saying, I am the one who's come to do this. And this is the mission. And we know that he only did what he saw Father doing. And he only said what he heard Father saying. So this is God's mission for Jesus. And in John chapter 20, he says to the boys, after the resurrection, he breathes on them. He says, receive the Spirit. And then he says, as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. In other words, the mandate that was on Jesus is now being given to us. As the Father sent me, now I'm sending you. So you need to go and do these things. Yay. So we don't come here Sunday by Sunday just to sit in a seat. That's not the reason for us being here. We come here Sunday by Sunday in order that we might be strengthened, encouraged, challenged, equipped, and enabled so that we can actually do this Isaiah 61 stuff Monday through Saturday. And we come back the next Sunday, we're kind of like, oh, that is amazing. You know that declaration I did? That was the result. You know this healing thing? I prayed for this guy and man, pain left him. It's amazing. You know, I had a work colleague and they were down in the dumps and I gave them an encouraging word and their life turned around. This stuff works. It's amazing. And we're high-fiving. It's kind of like, yes, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me and 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 me. We all are me, 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 me too in the positive sense, right? Okay. So we come and we're kind of like, yes, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is moving powerfully. He said, but oh man, gosh, man, I took a body blow as well. Whew, somebody said something. Okay, hey, you know, half time in the change room, they stitch up where there's blood and whatever, and they kind of like, okay, you're a bit dirty. Yeah, we've got some new kit for you. So you can run out on the field again and you can play the game. The coach doesn't play the game. The players play the game. 
Sunday you hear and the coach is inspiring and encouraging, hopefully. And, and, and kind of like, hey, the strategy of the enemy, I just noticed he's been playing like this lately. So just be aware of the, cat, the, the strategy of the enemy. Oh, and by the way, let's go like this because I think we're going to outsmart him. And um, you know what? I think there's a goal for us there. Let's go for it. Let's gain some ground. And when halftime is over, the players play, not the coach. The body of Christ are the players, not the people on stages. This is what makes me so excited, is that we as the body of Christ are being equipped being encouraged, being anointed, and being released to go and be part of the expansion of the kingdom. And we don't all need a microphone. In fact, probably best if we don't. It's not about microphones, it's about influence. Can we shine light? Can we contend for our breakthrough that once we've got our breakthrough, we can say, hey, come on my work colleague, who don't yet know about Jesus, let me tell you how you can get breakthrough in your life. And it's kind of like, what? I didn't know that breakthrough was available. Yes, it is. Come. Let's go. Come through here. So your testimony, your victory, then can bring other people into victory. This is awesome stuff. You don't have to say, come to church and see what's going on. You can say, come and look at my life and see what's going on. I mean, if you want to bring them here, that's fine. We're getting a bit full, but... The <laughs> Did you say they could invite people? Did you say that? Gosh, okay. All right. Okay, I do need to try and bring this one to a close. The Lord is moving powerfully. He's got things for us. He says there's an open door, there's a pantry. But the enemy, the spiritual warfare that we were talking about earlier, the shouting and all the stuff, it comes to try and either distract or to intimidate us or cause us to just like abandon, give up. No. You know what? What the enemy meant for harm the Lord's now going to turn around for good. Because now, through faith and patient endurance, I'm actually strengthening my spiritual muscles. Now I get even stronger. Say, you know what, enemy? We're actually outsmarting you. What you meant for harm, for evil, God's going to turn it around. It's going to be so good, it's almost going to look like God was okay with it. Now God's not okay with what the enemy is doing. Okay? God's not okay with what the enemy is doing, but God is just so much more powerful that he's able to turn it around on the devil. So when the breakthrough comes, it's even greater. It's even more powerful. And we have the ability to steward the breakthrough better. Sometimes if you get a breakthrough too soon, you actually squander it. Remember the thing about Cyrus? It's like there's going to be treasures that are um, even secret things. I think the Lord has got stuff. I've prophesied this before. Fairly convinced of this one. There's stuff in the ground we don't yet know in our nation. But the Lord is keeping it hidden until there's such an administration that actually is for the people. And the wealth for the people of this nation. And he's keeping it hidden until such a time that we actually all benefit from what he put in the ground for us. Yay. So some of the things we're not yet ready for. But hallelujah, he is preparing the bride. And he is preparing us so that we can grow. All right. Not only must we grow, but we must go. So would you stand?
This is a season of breakthrough. This is a season of overcoming. This is a season of laying hold of all the good things that God has for us. And this is a season of having spiritual discernment and awareness. Oh, this is something that the enemy is trying to stop and hinder. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep pressing in because I know that there's victory on the other side. And I know he wins. And because I am in him, I too will win. So I have a quiet confidence that even though I'm in the battle, even though there's a storm raging around, even though there are a bunch of things that are trying to say to me, you're going to lose, this is too hard, this is too difficult, this is a mountain, it's impossible for you. We remember the words of Jesus. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So, Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you've given us this name, Breakthrough. It's for a reason, that we might learn to be a breakthrough people. We ask, Lord, for strength and courage, boldness, that when we are confronting these barriers, that we do not shrink back, But Holy Spirit, you energize us. You give us the grace and the power to keep pushing, to knock and keep on knocking until that is opened up. Thank you, Lord. You're setting captives free. Thank you that you have come to bring freedom in the house. Freedom in the house in our hearts and our minds, every aspect where the enemy has kept us and held us in darkness or in bondage, that you are bringing freedom. And we ask that in this season, increasingly, there might be more light shining into places of darkness, that the chains will be smashed, the bars will be cut, and the strategies and schemes of the enemy will be exposed and nullified. Cause us as your people to grow. So would you, would you release a supernatural growth agent into our hearts and our minds? Cause us to be a growing people in the season. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. To you be all the praise, all the honor, And all of the glory. And God's amazing breakthrough people said.